Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the sports arena. And uh, just like your boy Tom Brady, we're back. Anyhow, good evening. It's a Monday night. You know what we do. I got the crew here with me. Our queen of hoops first, as always, Megan Price. And then my man, sports reporter, sports reporter without pay, Ray Lynn, is in the building. Uh, John Shear is going to be joining us momentarily. Ty Ray and John and Mike Caratanudo are off on assignment. But uh, good evening to everyone. How's everybody feeling tonight? It's great. You know, Big 12 champs. Oh, Jesus. Here she goes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can support that, Megan, um, because it's not Dallas. I can support the Texas Longhorn. So, you know, it's good. Anyhow, uh, we got a jam packed show. We ain't going to wait for John. When John gets here, he gets here. But let's go ahead and jump right into the big news, of course, that ruined Mike Caratanudo's selection Sunday. It is the fact that the GOAT, Tom Brady, said after 40 days, you know what? Giselle wants me out the house because she realizes I'm going to be too much for her and I have unfinished business. And so I am back. Season 23 of TV 12 with Tampa Bay and everybody, I can tell you, everybody from the moment that news broke last night till today in this area has just been elated, excited. I think they continued partying <laughs> and left the river green in Tampa. They might even turned it red because it was Christmas in the Tampa Bay area. The fact that Tom Brady is back. So queen of hoops, let me ask you, give me your thought and impression on the fact that Tom Brady back again, man. Um, this guy's never going to retire. He's going to be 50 plus playing the game. Um, I mean, he still competes at such a high level. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely not afraid to call him possibly the best quarterback we've ever seen. Um, and I, I think he wants one more ring and just to, you know, solidify that maybe nobody's going to catch that record anytime soon. Um, and, and I don't blame him. I don't blame their fans, to be honest. You, you remember whenever they they got Tom Brady, everybody was celebrating. It was we're going to the Super Bowl. And that was basically the news again last, yesterday. So um, and I love, love, love that he did it with Cristiano Ronaldo, that he was over at the Man United game. And, you know, Ronaldo asked him. So are you done? And he was like, yeah, he hadn't announced it yet, but you know, you knew it was coming. So happy for them. Um, I know they were concerned. They were one of those teams like, you know, we're QB short. What are we going to do? So um, they are in cap hell though. So they have some things to figure out. It's definitely not about the money for Tom Brady. So that's not going to be the problem, but um, you know, happy for them. And I, I think we see at least a, possibly an NFC championship appearance wow she already staking her claim saying they're I think it's going possible. i think it's possible oh okay all right because i was like whoa megan already dropping bold moves like that <laughs> so welcome in john Shear, fox sports 13 40 a.m and sideline sports uh so Raylin, let me ask you that question going to you next my brother because here's the thing if you're matt ryan <laughs> you have got to be one of the most angriest men in the world because you know Tom was gone. There was nobody else in your division who could hold a candle to you, sir. You were the it guy. The Falcons, it was yours to take. And then all of a sudden, last night, Matt Ryan was like, damn, I got to see this guy again. Not once, but twice. Blessing Talk in disguise. Me. Blessing in disguise for Matt Ryan. Because when Tom Brady comes and takes over your division, at least it's Tom Brady, right? Like, if... if Tom Brady comes back, and now the Bucks again reign supreme in the NFC South. As Matt Ryan, you go, well, it's Tom Brady. Like, it would really suck if you lost the division to uh, whoever. If you lost it to Sam Darnold. If you lost it to, I, I don't know why his name is escaping me. The guy that's really not a quarterback, but that's a quarterback in New Orleans, right? Like, if you lose it to those guys, then, like, it's time for you to hang them up. So Are you good. talking about James Winston? No, no, no. He's <laughs> talking about <laughs> the other guy that's a quarterback, but not a quarterback. Oh, okay. They gave yes. all the money to. Um, like if you lose it to those guys, then it sucks. As far as Tom Brady, I, I, Eric, I wish I would have messaged you earlier and had you find the episode where it was right after they lost and we were talking about is Brady going to retire? And I said, absolutely not. You guys said, why not? I said, because he has that thing in him, that thing that athletes have where it's like, I have to be the best. And I'm like, he can't go out this way. There's no way he can go out the way he went out. He wants to go out on top. He wants to come. He wants to go out like Ray Lewis went out. He wants to go out like Mike went out in 98. He wants to win, drop the mic, and walk away from the game. 
and he lost. I'm not going to say in an embarrassing fashion. It's like he, not, he didn't play a horrible game, but I just knew that couldn't be it. I messaged somebody when Brady, when the message came out, I said, Brady came out of retirement. Dude said to come out of something, you got to first be in it. He, he never, like, none of us thought that was going to last. So I'm not surprised by the move. Um, it just adds to the whirlwind of football news this week, uh, this past week or so. It's been amazing. You know, we're going to talk about some more of that. So uh, it's their division to lose. I think they had enough in place to come back. I mean, as we've talked about teams that needed a quarterback, we all said Tampa Bay's the place to go. They got all them weapons in place that Brady had, and the division is wide open. Any, any, like, nice quarterback could go there and instantly be the best quarterback in the division. So the, the guy that y'all keep calling the GOAT came back, and it's his division. So, John Shear, I got to talk to you because I think you were one of the few people who was like, he's gone. This is it. He said he's satisfied. He He's done everything. But, again, twice this week we were – we were proven wrong, if you will. First with the Aaron whole Aaron Rodgers contract debacle, which it wasn't what we thought it was or what we heard it was going to be. And now we thought Tom Brady had driven off into the sunset. Him, Giselle, and the kids were just going to you know, be out there in L.A. with his TB12 organization. And the man, 40 days, 40 days from the time he officially said he was retired until now. And now he's back in Tampa. And listen, I can still hear people cheering over the Skyway Bridge and the Howard Franklin, thanking their lucky stars and everybody else that they got one more year, one more year with Tom Brady. So what's your question? My, my, oh, I'm sorry. My, my, my <laughs> bad. My question to you, John, is how are you feeling about all this? Um, I mean, nobody's talking about how they lost two starting offensive linemen already. One retired, and then one went to the Bengals. So that's two that Brady's down already that he's used to. Two Pro Bowl linemen gone. So, I mean, nobody's talking about that. That's that's a big loss for Tom Brady and the, and the Bucks. I don't think anybody should necessarily fear this team. It's not the same team that went to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. The Rams exposed them a lot. I know they were banged up a lot, but the, the Rams really exposed them. And... They don't have A.B. anymore. Gronk is just, I mean, even if Gronk is your tight end, he's hes getting older, you know. And like I said, the line isn't quite the same. They got a, they got no cap. They still got to figure out, you know, some of the other guys to re-sign. Um, you know, they'll be in the thick of things just because the NFC doesn't have a lot of great teams. But I don't see them as a Super Bowl contender. I mean, even if they do have Brady, I just don't think the roster makeup – is good enough to be able to compete with the Packers and the Rams and even, you know, the 49ers. Like, I just don't think that, at least right now here today, I don't think that the roster is good enough and they don't have the cap to fix it. So I don't know what they're going to do to fix the line, to resign all these guys. Chris Godwin's not happy. He got tagged. He is not happy about that at all. So you have an unhappy Chris Godwin because he, you know, he deserves to get paid and, you know, he's coming off his injury and you keep tagging him and he doesn't want to be tagged. He wants a deal and you won't give him it. So, okay. um, but in that regard, John, he got tagged, I think, because of his injury. We don't know if he's going to be able to have a bounce back year. But that's but the thing. I know. think he just wants he wants a long term deal, and I think he feels that he's going to bounce back from you know okay. every a lot of but players his, bounce back from this injury. But his actual production is still yet to be seen, and I don't think he. What do you mean production is yet to be like off the injury? Off the injury. Okay. Exactly. Yes, I'm not talking and about we, what we he all know how Bruce play. Arians operates with injured players. Ab, hello. Yeah, but that, he has I, a whole, okay. whole off season. Yeah, I think that's recover. I think that's a, a horse of a different color, Megan. But what I'm saying to you is Chris Godwin came back and got franchise tagged without knowing that Brady was back. I don't think he's that mad right. now right. that but he, he knows he, he's Brady not is getting, back. You know, he's getting top five money, but there's no security in that. You don't have a long-term deal. You don't have guaranteed money. You know what I mean? Like those okay. are things that players really value as opposed to just – the dollar signs, but players value the job security, the four years, you know, guaranteed money. Like you saw DeMarcus Lawrence got, he's the first defensive end ever to get seven years of guaranteed money. Like, 
I respect like, what you're that's saying. That's what guys want, and Chris I, I, Godwin doesn't have that. I understand that, but let me let me let me play both sides of the coin here, John. Okay, Brady is coming back for one. Let's just say it's one more year. Let's just take next season and leave yep. it at that for now. If you know that you are going to be outside of Mike Evans, of course, you and Mike Evans are going to be that dynamic duo yet again, and you've got Brady, so the chemistry is already there, and you just need to sprinkle in some pieces. You still have a Scotty Miller. Now, yes, I mean, listen, didn't Ryan Jensen, the center, didn't he just resign? Yeah. So and, I mean, and they got to figure out the run game too. They got to figure out letters, whether they're okay. bringing back Leonard. But that's Fournette. what I'm saying to you. I, I, to Megan's point, I understand the cap hit, but you don't think these gentlemen for one year won't restructure their contracts in order to I don't get think one so. more ring and be I a think, part uh, of the team that sent Brady off into the sunset with number eight. You know what so I'm saying? They, like, so they all went and got a championship, and all these guys restructured their deals, took less money so they could all run it back. They didn't win a championship. So now you're asking them to take less money for a second year in a row? Because you learn from your mistakes, John. You learn if from you your mistakes. Second... This this isn't the roster that won the Super Bowl, though. This is this roster is a lot worse. We still don't know what's going to happen in the offseason. Right. I'm just the saying right here, is... right now, today. No, I know. The, the roster is a lot worse than their Super Bowl run, I which not, was kind of a fluky run, you know. If you ask me, a little how bit is of it a fluky, fluky run? run? They well, they got healthy at the right time and did exactly what everybody expected and anticipated. Well, you had them the noodle get. arm. Drew Brees was. I don't care what the. I don't care what the on the other side. Patrick I don't Mahomes care about had that. no offensive line. Okay, you know, like John. John, if it was a fifth, this would be the sip off. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If that's how you. things happen. They got know, momentum I'm just saying, at the right time and rode them into a championship. Who's to say that couldn't happen this team again? Isn't, this team isn't, you know, going out and getting another one. Okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. And you expect guys to take less money a second year in a row? Okay. But if you know, again, you could be a part of history. You could be a part of legacy. You could be a part of the 53-man roster or 55-man roster that gives Brady number eight and say, I was a part of that. I did what was best for the team to ensure I got my second, third. These guys want their bag. Eighth. Okay. They want All their right. bread. I I will disagree you know with you. Let me get like, Ray Lynn. Chris Godwin wants his bread. And I'm not saying he's not worth it, but do you want your bread or do you want legacy? Uh, not a, not everybody's that intent on legacy. Some All right. Let me go to Ray Lynn and let me go to let me go to the Queen of Hoops. Ask y'all that question. If they can restructure and find a way to get it done, to win for Brady number eight, and for some of these gentlemen, number two, or even number one for those that are coming in via the draft or offseason or trades or whatever. Are they about that bag, or are they about that legacy? Let me ask y'all. I, I feel like we're not talking about Kirk Cousins. You know, We're not talking about somebody that only cares about the money and doesn't care about the mediocrity that they you know, bring upon the entire season. And so... These these people have won a championship and they are competitive. I think you're not going to play under Tom Brady or Bill Belichick for the majority of his career and not have that winning mentality, winning first, team first. So I think majority of those players are probably about the team. They want to get back to that championship. They want to win another one. And obviously we see it out of their quarterback. So um, I do think there are players out there in the league that it's pay me first. And I understand it because you're out there, you're putting your body on the line every single game, every single practice, not knocking you. It's a business, get your money. But there are players out there that are about the championship and about that winning culture. And I believe the Bucks are about that or they wouldn't have Tom Brady there. So Ray Lynn, I'm going to let you answer that, but we do have a question directly to you. So I want you to kind of do double duty for me here. we got a question for you. Do you think Tom can take this team to the Super Bowl this coming season? And if he loses, will he play another year? Is this more one year or not? Uh, right now, I would say it's just for one year. And I can tie all that stuff together. Um, so, yes, and like, like John said, as constructed right now, no. But do I think they're done? Absolutely not. Like, they didn't go get Tom Brady to just – we saw what they did the year he came. They went and got Tom Brady. They immediately followed that by going to get Gronk out of retirement. They went and got Leonard Fournette. They went and got Antonio Brown. And, again, we just talked about this two shows ago. Rams did the same formula. We went and got Stafford. 
that's not good enough. We're going to go get OBJ. We're going to go get Von Miller. We're going to pull Eric Weddle out of retirement. Teams are not, teams are basically buying championships now. So for them to go pull Brady out of retirement, they're not done. Y'all think this is the last we've seen of Robert Gronkowski? He'll be back. Brady came back. Guess what? Gronk coming back. Fournette ain't going to go nowhere. Now, what I will say is about the money. This is my issue with players and money and that whole winning culture thing, right? If I'm Chris Godwin, if I'm Mike Evans, if I'm Leonard Fournette, right? And people go, oh, he's selfish. He only wants the money. You damn right I am. Because I'm not playing for my legacy. I'm playing for his. If they win, it's all about Brady and number eight. Mike Evans' legacy don't take no bump. Leonard Fournette legacy don't take a bump. Position players' legacies don't take bumps with championships. Barry Sanders is the greatest running back to ever do it. Ain't never sniffed a championship. So when you're a position player and they go, you should sacrifice winning culture. For what? Your legacy is never going to be remembered any better or any worse by how many championships you did or did not win. When you're in a football com uh, community and you take a pay cut for the winning culture, it's all about the quarterback. He can only become greater or not as great based on winning. It doesn't affect you at all. Nobody's ever going to say Mike Evans isn't great because he didn't win a championship. <laughs> Randy Moss, no championship. Megatron, no championship. Terrell Owens, no championship. Greatest receivers to ever do it alongside Jerry Rice, right? Quarterbacks are the only people judged on winning and losing. So if I'm going to take a pay cut, for what? For his legacy? No, I got to get mine while I'm still healthy. So I have no problems with players not taking the pay cuts. The thing is, Brady has done it his whole career taking pay cuts so they can build around him. But it, I, I don't know if it's a like calling players selfish for not doing it. Look, man, they got to get it while they can. Mm -hmm. But they already franchise Godwin. Mike's under contract. They ain't got a whole lot they need to bring in. So they can be competitive. But, of course, when you ask me, do I think they'll win this year? No, I'm sticking with my quarterback over there in L.A. That's what we think. <laughs> I don't listen. I don't disagree with you. I just know the dynamic of the landscape. And more importantly, I know that when you have number 12 under center, anything and everything is possible. So we're going to stick a pin in this conversation. And that's why I think they're not done, Eric. I they agree. I agree. Done. There's going to be more that follows Brady. But, but Eric, how do you fix before? how do you fix this roster when you have $2 million in cap space? Okay. John. Like I'm asking you, like how I, do you no, do I'm that? I'm going to, well, you know what? Zip your lip. Let me answer the question for you. <laughs> okay, this one I'm gonna answer the question for you. We know that Brady is scheduled to get 20 million. We know that. Okay, but if everybody and their grandmama, from Jason Light, the Glazer family, all the way down, understands that this is it. This is not two years ago when you were fortunate enough to get him and pull a team around him. Because see, now the business aspect comes into play. And that five-letter word that some people say can't buy you happiness, I say, well, let me get rich and I'll tell you after the fact. Money is playing a major role. You don't think, just like Ray Lynn said, Tom Brady has been taking less money year in and year out for them to build around him. You mean to tell me he wouldn't do it again? Knowing, knowing full blown well that this at 40, John, 45, Tom Brady will be 45 going into this season. Yep. He is pushing Father Time's buttons. Father Time continually is like, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And Tom Brady keeps going, No, you're not. I'm going to do it again. Watch me do it again. Want to see it one more time? Watch the replay. This is what I'm telling you. I know what he is scheduled to get. But if you know that there are pieces out there, that can complement your team and put you in the best position, knowing the landscape of the NFC. Because the landscape of the NFC, think about it like this. The landscape of the NFC last Monday was what? Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford, everybody else. Now the landscape has changed. Now the landscape is Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, everybody else. Aaron Rodgers has to... <laughs> John, we stick a pit in this one. You and I will have a conversation. We got so crazy much more putting to Tom to. Brady and the Bucks above everybody else. I'm saying quarterback wise, Tom, uh, John. I'm not saying team. Okay, you're wise. saying quarterback. I thought I'm you said team wise. If you okay. would, you know what? That's why God give you two ears and one mouth. Zip it and listen. I'm <laughs> trying to explain it to you. I'm listening. Okay? I'm listening. Okay, quarterback wise. Let me clarify for the people in the back of the cheap seats. And thank y'all <laughs> for tuning in. It is Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford. Everybody else, every other quarterback, 
in the NFC that has to contend, okay? Aaron Rodgers had it all day long. Matthew Stafford is the reigning Super Bowl champion. I'll even, for, for my man Ray Lynn, let me go full screen and do it one time for Ray Lynn. Matthew Stafford is the reigning, defending, undisputed NFL Super Bowl world champion with the Los Angeles Rams. Okay. Detroit Rams. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're taking a break. When we come back, we are going to transition to the NBA because there is so much to talk about. More with this crew in a moment. Welcome back into the sports arena on a Monday night. Your man, Eric Wilson, alongside the queen of hoops, Megan Price, sports reporter without pay, Ray Lynn, and John Shear, Sideline Sports Network, Fox Sports, 1340 AM. All right, so let's transition to the NBA because I'm perplexed, if you will. I'm slightly befuddled by what I've seen with regards to the Brooklyn Nets and the city of New York. So... Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and who I'm considering to be the meanest man on that team, Seth Curry, came into Philadelphia last Thursday and just stomped the 76ers. Uh, to use a Jim Ross term, they stomped a mud hole in our ass and walked it dry. Okay? They did. Seth Curry was the meanest man out on that court. Forget the jaw jacking that happened between Kevin Durant and Joel Embiid. Forget the Kyrie Irving-James Harden matchup. Seth Curry was a man possessed. If I had never seen his brother Stephen Curry play, I'd have swore he was the greatest three-point man out there. That brother just reminded everybody in Philadelphia, you let one of the best things go, and I'm going to remind you every time I see you. That being said, the rule states in New York City that an NBA player must be vaccinated in order to play at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. So riddle me this, Batman, Raylan, that you got you got a face on you. What's up? I don't know. I don't want to. Carl Anthony Towns is killing your Spurs, Megan. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they had 40 points in the first quarter. I am not surprised. <laughs> well, he got 44 in the third. Carry on, Eric. Okay. Goodness. Your eyes sold a different story. I was like, did I misspeak? Did I say something wrong? Okay. No, so, um, so what I don't gather is why Kyrie Irving can show up to the game but not play, but he can be in the stand with the fans and watch his team play, but he's unvaccinated. He's making that choice. And again, no one here on the sports arena is saying that people have to do or do not. It is totally their choice. I want to make sure that everybody understands where we come from. But it just doesn't make any sense to me. And then what I find a little more interesting is, in fact, that after their win last night, 
that, you know, KD put up 50. He went on to call out the mayor of New York City saying that he needs to address this issue because it just doesn't make any sense. Now, whether you agree to it or not, the rule is the rule. Now, it did not come from the current mayor of New York, Eric Adams. It came from the former mayor, de Blasio. That was his mandate. So Eric Adams is just walking into the policies and guidelines and rules and procedures that were put in place prior to him taking over. But again, Kyrie can show up, be in the fan, be in the stands with the fans, high five everybody and cheer on his team like like any athlete would, whether they were injured and couldn't play, they'd still sit on the sideline. He's just a couple rows back. But he can't play there. So, uh, Ray Lynn, please, and then I also want to hear from the Queen and I want to hear from John about this, but I need to know y'all's thoughts on this and where you stand with it. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen or heard <laughs> in my life. Like, so, I, I've... I've traveled and been a few places like at the airport they taking their precautions if you go on the cruise they say you either have to have proof of vaccination or you have to have a negative covid test in the last have many hours i'm a church musician some churches are putting this kind of stuff i get it take all your precautions you could what it turns into is we don't want to blame the fall back on us get it so you're telling me if i play for the los angeles lakers if i play for the chicago bulls if i play for the washington wizards of philly I can come play in New York because I'm not a resident. I don't live here, but I can come here and play here, vaccinated or not. But because Kyrie Irving lives there, he can't play. How stupid is that? And then to add insult to injury, he can show up to the game and sit sit there with fans, no mask, high fives, hugs, the whole nine. What are we protecting people from? At this point, it's a matter of saying, Well, we dug in and we stick into our guns. Now, I don't think it was the smartest thing in the world for Kevin Durant to go calling out the mayor because as me, like just as people, as men, like, oh, you testing my bravado now. I'm going to really show you. But he ain't lying. Like when when you sit back and you really just, you when you say all of that stuff out loud, it's about the dumbest thing you heard. It's the second dumbest thing I heard this week besides the dude, the Black Panther director being arrested. That was just so stupid. But this is a long, like, it's just so dumb. Like that, because I live here and I don't have a shot, can't play. I come to the games, I can't play. Everywhere else with COVID, you go there, they say, hey, these rules of vaccination, either you, you got it or you don't, you can't even, you can't be here. No, I can be here. I can hug and high five and no mask, spread the same germs that you worried about, but I can't play. You can't bounce to basketball. basketball. <laughs> can't bounce to basketball, right? I, like that. I, I'm, I, I would venture to say we all going to be on the same page on this one. But I'm good, Eric. Like I, That's just dumb. It makes no sense. Can't nobody make it make sense. John Shear. Me? I, I think that, uh, I mean, just piggybacking off everything Raylan said, I think he's being punished. That's what I think it is. I mean, if if you're taking out all the other things that you could justify him not being able to play for, then the only thing with deductive reasoning left is you're punishing him. That's it. I mean, there's nothing else. No mask. He's chilling in the building near everybody, high-fiving, blah, 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 just like everybody else. What's the difference if he's standing on a basketball court, bouncing a basketball, or chilling in the stands? It's actually worse if he's sitting in the stands, right? That's worse. He's near the people that you're trying to protect him from, right? That's, That's worse to me. If you're actually serious about safety, then him being on the court is safer than him being around the people in the stands because that would be able to spread it more, right? So you're only punishing him. That's it. That's the only reason. That's the only thing I can think of because there's no other like you, deductive reasoning based on what Ray Lynn said. Everything else is gone. So you're you're just, like he said, you're just digging in and – you're saying this is what we're gonna do, and uh, I just, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so again, I don't get it. I'm gonna go to both sides of the coin here, and before I get to our queen of hoop, I'm gonna ask this question because it takes two to tango. All right, now yes, Eric Adam, the current mayor of New York City, could in fact, you know, rescind this mandate, lift it. And basically say, okay, he is allowed to play and, you know, we can 
scale back, if you will, on having to wear a mask and, and you know, that whole what that whole process looks like. But there again, I'm going to go to Kyrie and say, you know, this is the rule. And I understand that we all have our differences of opinion. But your fans are missing out seeing you drop 50, seeing you with some of the best handles we've ever seen. You're a generational talent, but you can't do it on your home court. The easy solution is to very simply go get vaccinated. And now I know, again, I don't care what people do, but this is a two-sided situation. The current mayor of New York, like I said, could, in fact, change the ruling. But Kyrie Irving, knowing that he could essentially be a pivotal piece, which we've seen him be when he's not in Brooklyn, he could simply go get the shot. So I'm going to go to Megan on this one. I, I have a lot to say on this one, actually. Um, um, and I think that, like you said, you have to go to both sides of the coin on this. My problem with this mandate is the hypocrisy of it, um, that he could be in the stands, but he couldn't be on the court. Um, but also, New York City is not the only city that's doing this. San Francisco is doing this. We didn't think he was going to be able to play games in Golden State, but because he's not a resident, he could play. So my problem is with that. I, I like what Toronto's actually doing. They actually don't have fans in the stands, but if they have fans um, going into the playoffs, you're going to have to be vaccinated to be in the building, period, end of story. That's how they're going to fix it. Um, the difference with Golden State is you don't have any unvaccinated players on that team. Um, and I highly doubt that um, de Blasio or any mayor of any city is going to sit there and punish one NBA player. Like they didn't set out and say, hey, this rule, I'm just going to I'm going to single out Kyrie Irving. Um, no, that's not that's not how it works. And now, obviously, a successful sports franchise is great for the city, but they have bigger problems. They have had almost three million cases of COVID there and almost 40,000 deaths. So that's what their problem is. And that's where this mandate started with. <clears throat> My problem with the mandate is the hypocrisy of it, because you're going to let players, very few uh, players are unvaccinated in the NBA, but as long as you're not a resident, you can come into New York City and you can play. Um, very hypocritical. I, I, I feel like what Toronto is doing, if you're going to do it, ride it out all the way. It's all or nothing, in my opinion. Um, and you know, this wasn't going to be a factor because the way Toronto started out the season, nobody thought they were going to be the playoffs, but they're sitting at the seat, seven seed and Brooklyn is sitting at the eight seed. So most likely we're going to see them in the playoffs and I'm not saying we're going to see that matchup, but if we do see that matchup and the rule stands as it is, Kyrie's not playing the entire, the entire series. And so instead of calling out the mayor for this, I think I would probably turn to my teammate and say, Hey, didn't you go to public school in this city? Every single person that walks into public school has a list of vaccinations that they have to take because it's for the better of everybody else that's inside that building. Um, and so that's what this started out. That's what this mandate started out as. But to allow players that are unvaccinated and as long as you're not a resident, you can come in and play. So and I see the comment play in, not playoffs. I understand that. But I'm saying if the playoffs started today, not including the play in tournament. Muted, you're, muted, e. you're muted. I, I'm muted because I am. I'm, I'm still slightly just trying to wrap my head around this because Megan made amazing points. But let me get Raylan back in on this. E, put put up put, put us all for on here because I want to see you when I say this. Sure. ESPN calls. People don't know this. I know this. You've emailed and been in contact with some people from ESPN, right? Dude, called your phone or emailed you. I don't remember which one it was, right? But you've spoken to these people. ESPN calls you, man. Listen, man, we looked at some of your content. We really love what you're doing. We like the show. I don't want nobody to take this person. I'm going to use John. I was about to use Megan, but somebody back. It's the girl. It's not a girl thing. You can do the show. You got to get rid of that John Shear guy. We don't like his voice. What you say? Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Have a good day. Right? Cause, Cause, it's a team, right? Right. You gonna stay yeah. ten toes now? Somebody on the outside looking in goes, "E, I can't believe you. You turned down ESPN." Yeah, 
I stood 10 toes down in what I believe in. This is my right. team. This is my family, right? I'm never going to be mad at Kyrie simply because he stood his ground from day one. He ain't changed one bit. If he was wavering back and forth, I'd be like, this dude, if he's on some A-Rod stuff, right? Like, or like I'm Brady, I'm retiring. No, I'm back. Like that kind of thing. Or like I said, A-Rod, one minute I'm with the team and now I don't want to be here. Now I'm going to sign again. Only one year. Now I'm a, No, Kyrie has said from day one, this is where I stand and I'm not going to do it. So much so that the team, now we ain't, not, not the mayor, the team then punished him. The Brooklyn Nets punished Kyrie Irving and said, we don't want you part-time. If you're not going to do the vaccine, we don't need you. We don't want a part-time player. Until they needed him when injuries started happening and COVID protocol and they started losing games. They said, hold up, we'll, we'll take you part-time, dog. Come on. Come on back. Kyrie still never wavered. I can't be mad at nobody that stand firm in what they believe in. Whether we agree with it or not, I got the vaccine. I think everybody should get it. Like we said, man, we all went to public schools. Ain't nothing wrong with the vaccine, right? But if that's what he believes in, Kyrie also believes the earth is flat, right? So whatever it is he feel he believes in, I can't be mad at somebody for standing firm in that. And people like Mike Wilbon who get on TV. And again, if the question is, is the mandate stupid? My answer is yes. Because it ain't like you, you do the both sides of the coin. I love the new phrase too, right? Both sides of yes. the coin. I get it. Maybe Kyrie should. But the mandate is still stupid because Kyrie don't have it. It's hurting them. Meanwhile, if there's a series and Brooklyn goes against Chicago and Zach Levine don't have it, he can come right in Brooklyn and wear y'all ass out. Why yo guy can't? Because he lives there. That's just dumb. There's nothing. There's no other way to put it, but that's dumb, right? So again, with me, yes, I 100% Kyrie should do it. But because he hasn't, I got no issues with it because he's made himself clear from day one that this is where I stand. Y'all can stop asking me about it. But don't you worry, Raylan. That same guy that's going to watch Zach Zach Levine destroy your team in Brooklyn, he gets a chill, you know, courtside and and watch it all happen. In yeah, the building, he, maskless, he, hanging out he, with everybody. He, don't he's you worry. The been yelling out double. Yeah. <laughs> But the New York City mayor did not say, I'm going to punish Kyrie Irving. It didn't happen like that. Right, yet. but well, it, no, it, no. I mean, you the know? deductive reasoning, if, if you're taking everything else away, this has to be basically a punishment. And I'm not saying the mandate is right. You know I, I, mean? I don't like, like the hypocrisy of it. Like some, like you said, you're, right. not a re you're not a resident. You can come play. That, that makes no sense. Um, or you can even be in the stands. That makes literally no sense. But I'm just saying, like, if, it, if I'm the teammate, and, and what KD actually said was the mayor is looking for attention. Uh, are you serious? He has much bigger problems than the Brooklyn Nets. I agree. But, and this is where I will side with what Kendrick Perkins said today on first take. Here's the thing. Sometimes you need to draw attention to Megan, as you said, the hypocrisies that exist. And we need to start bringing things into the light. Now, this all started yesterday. And 24 hours later, it's still a topic of conversation, meaning the conversation is still being had. This wasn't something that was a feeder or swept under the rug or it was a five, 10 minute thing. No, this is something serious. And I think the timing, this is where I will give KD some credit. The timing of this, I think, was spot on because we're coming around to the start of not only the play in tournament, but also the playoffs. KD realizes, I need my dude. If I got my dude with me, ain't nobody stopping us in the East. Not Milwaukee, not Chicago, not Miami, not Philly, not Boston. We taking everybody. But I need my guy with me for every series, every game. So that's why I say he was smart in drawing light to it. But again, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. For sure. For and sure. I think I that's think he, what happened. And he has that problem of yeah. yeah, Kevin Durant has word vomit a lot. Go ahead, really. John, Megan, anybody else on here? How many other NBA players do we know that aren't vaccinated? It's a handful, maybe it's like handful. five. Maybe. But how many do we know by name? Oh. Only um, Kyrie. I know Kyrie. So so 
I don't, <laughs> it's weird when John say they punishing him. It's like, God, that's tough to think they would. But like when the mayor sits back in his office and somebody explains it the way I just did and go, you know, really the only person this is affecting is Kyrie Irving. Don't affect the fans. Nobody checking them. They can come and watch the game. Don't affect the opposing players. They can come play in our stadium. Don't matter. We're not checking for them. The rest of our team have the vaccine. Who's the only person this is hurting? So and I, and, I, and I, I I can see where you're coming, deducing it to that. But also, I mean, I feel like if he had a negative test, he should just be allowed to be there, in my opinion. Agreed. <clears throat> maybe maybe that's the happy medium that needs mm -hmm. to exist moving forward. As long Jesus. as he comes in with the negative test, should 24 be no hours reason. before be game no reason time. He can't play. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until that, until that comment, I completely forgot Simmons was on their team still. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I try, I tend to forget people that uh, quit on Philadelphia. So anyhow, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to go back to the NFL because I've got a couple questions. And even though Ty Ray is not here tonight, I am going to talk about one of his favorite people who I y'all know, I think he is the walking piece of mediocrity, but the brother got his money. So I can't argue that one. More with the crew when we come back. Connecting your brain and body with interactive games and tests. Why is there no physical activity in today's health physical? Tracer is a holistic technology used to rehabilitate, prevent falls, and improve sport performance. Tracer reports provide you, your clinician, your physical therapist, or athletic trainer, objective data to make decisions on your health and performance over time. Measure what matters to change your game. Take the Tracer Challenge. Confidence, growth, connected by Tracer. into the sports arena your man eric wilson alongside the entire crew john share ray lynn and megan hey shout out to everybody on the sideline sports network family from the gauntlet podcast to the sip off nba carousel alex Fleming's nfl carousel sideline sports the flagship show uh the pundits pundit we got the play callers blog we got both sides of the coin actually that is the name of the show that they do every other wednesday night after our show so man we got a lot of stuff going on if y'all have not seen sideline sports network you clearly just ain't paying attention so can I bring Let's, up a comment? Can please. I bring up a comment? I just love this comment. Is this James Harden commenting on our on our show? The con man? Is that James Harden commenting? Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> he's a, he's actually a basketball historian friend of mine. Yes. Okay, and I that is James not James. Harden. Good try. <laughs> so we're going to the NBA. Back to the NFL, excuse me. All right. So Tom Brady came back. Aaron Rodgers staying in Green Bay. We saw that uh, Russell Wilson is now in Denver. I believe, last I checked, uh, Teddy Bridgewater heading to your Miami Dolphins, John Shear. But yep. the name that is still out there is Deshaun Watson. So, simple question. I'm going to give everybody the screen because I want to hear what y'all got to say. Let's be quick about this because I want to get to these last two and we only got about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to give everybody 30 seconds. I need y'all to tell me where is Deshaun Watson going to play the 2022-2023 season? We're just going to go around the clock here. Megan, then Ray Lynn, then John. So Megan, 30 seconds. Where is he going to play? Um, so today we heard that Indy tried to talk to Deshaun Watson and Houston denied it. Um, I feel like obviously Indy is probably the best place, the best fit for him, but he's not going to end up there. So um, I think it's between the Panthers and the Saints. I, personally, I feel like it's going to be the Saints, the Panthers coach, which and I know the Saints have some things going on with their coaching problems as well. But that Panthers coach is awful and he signed to a six year deal. So I think he's more likely to go somewhere like the Saints. Um, who have a winning culture. Panthers don't win. 
if the San Francisco 49ers are smart, they go all in and they give up anything that Houston is asking for, right? That's the team that is really a quarterback away. Like people talked about Denver, people talked about Pittsburgh. No, no, no. San Francisco is really a quarterback away, right? Like they went into the NFC championship without a guy that we think is a marquee quarterback. They should give up everything. I have 10 seconds left. Carl Anthony Towns has 56 points with seven minutes left in the game. Carry on. <laughs> Well, people did not talk about Denver being a quarterback away. You did, Raylan, with your asinine comment last week. Anyway, um, I think uh, the Panthers are getting Deshaun Watson. I think he makes perfect sense. If the trade is right, then I think that he would be a perfect fit. If they can keep CMC with Deshaun Watson and they just got one of the Rams offensive linemen, which was a big deal for the Panthers to take him from the Rams, I think Deshaun Watson and the Panthers would be perfect. So, as y'all know, I live, breathe, eat, sleep the green that is the Philadelphia Eagles. So, yes, I'm going to throw my name and my team in the ringer. Deshaun Watson, come on to Philly. You got an easy division because you got Daniel Jones, Carson Wentz, and Dak Prescott. That's six wins right there if we have Deshaun Watson under center. I'm going to tell y'all right now. So, for Ah. my pick, yes, I'm going to be a homer on this one and very simply say, Deshaun Watson, welcome. To the two one five, baby. I need to get you there. Yep. I think y'all are better off rolling with Hertz. I didn't say we were better or worse. I'm just saying I want Deshaun in Philly. That's what okay. I'm saying. No, I, I do think Deshaun's a better quarterback, but I think Jalen, um, I think he's your franchise guy. I mean, I like Jalen. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. So now James, my eagle brother, is like, so I'm I knew out it on was gonna, I knew it. No, I'm not out on Jalen Hurts. I'm just saying, to Megan's point, I think Deshaun Watson is better than Jalen Hurts. Yes, I will of say course. that. So that's you didn't me. want to highlight my comment about the knees? <sighs> you guys would dominate that NFC least easily. You would dominate I'm that you, NFC I like what I said. Easily. Didn't, I, didn't I say six wins? Did, uh, that's, got, that's all it would take. We win in the division. Which guarantees us a playoff. Guarantee victory. win in the division if you get. I'm not guarantee. doing this with y'all today. I'm not doing this with y'all today. <laughs> uh, all right. See, she needs Mike as backup. I'm I'm good. I can fly solo and be perfectly okay with my team. So. Jerry been making making bad moves all week. I, oh I, yes. I don't yes. know. I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm just saying thank you, Jerry. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That Michael Gallup deal. Anyhow, so. Let's get to our last question of the night. <clears throat> and again, I want to thank Ray Lynn because he was like, definitely make sure I add this topic in just to make sure we have plenty of time. My question very simply is this. Which Kirk do you feel was overpaid? Kirk Cousins or Christian Kirk? John Shear. I Where do I start, man? I mean, of course, Kirk Cousins is overpaid, but he's been overpaid for a couple years. This deal with Christian Kirk to the Jags is one of the dumbest deals I've ever seen. The guy has never had a thousand yards in the season. He's a th- number three at best. Like he's a number three. He's a slot guy, which which they're nice, but I mean he's not a slot guy of like Cooper Cup's caliber. He's not like he's not that type of slot guy. Like this guy is uh yeah, he sometimes he'll catch a deep ball for you and that's about it. Like He's not going to go over the middle and, and drive you downfield and catch four passes in a row and take you down. Like, I, I don't understand this deal. I understand you want to go and get Trevor Lawrence weapons, but literally nobody in the league is offering Christian Kirk that kind of money. And you're just like, hey, we think everybody's offering him that. Let's go and overpay him. Let's go do it. Like, what are you thinking? There's 31 other teams that are like, no, we're good. Like, you can have him. And no, 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 no. If you say so, I guess we're going to overpay him. Like, what in the world is this? Is almost, this is worse than than Michael Gallup getting the deal from the from the Cowboys. Like, this is way worse because at least Gallup is showing some promise. I don't believe in Christian Kirk at all. This this is one of the dumbest deals I've ever seen. All right, Megan Price, who uh, was overpaid, ahead. in your opinion? I got to agree and go with Christian Kirk. Um, if he was in Dallas, he'd be a wide receiver three, even without Coop. Um, he is, a at best, a wide receiver two. The only reason he had over 900 yards last season is because D-Hop was hurt so many games. Um, I, I think the Jags are just grasping at straws. 
trying to do anything. Um, I, I don't know. I can't imagine. I would have been focused on receivers in the draft or anybody other than Christian Kirk. Um, getting to Kirk Cousins. Now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, he's – I'm not on that same level with Ty Ray and that, oh, he's that great. He does put up some good numbers, though. Um, and they did not sign him to a multi-year deal. They signed him to a one-year deal. They've got a brand-new head coach. It is put up or shut up for Kirk Cousins this season. He has some weapons, um, and we sh we shall see, and then we'll be able to talk about Kirk after this season um, when they don't re-sign him, in my opinion. Okay, but Megan Price. He got guaranteed $35 million. No, and what kills me is he got a no-trade clause. That's what killed me was the no-trade clause. I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, you've got to ride with him this next season. But it's not like they signed him to a three-year deal or anything. They're not saying this is the guy for the future for us. This is the 11th season. We are critical of him. Maybe Mike Zimmer was the problem. Megan, how's it put up or shut up if he was on his last year of the deal and you're like, you know what? going to give him an extra year that's not put up shut up. That's not like, hey, let's just get on. no that's not saying he's the future did they sign no, him but it's not put up or shut like up that? if you're like yeah let's let's give him a brand new one more year of guarantee one like, year exactly but but earlier earlier you were just talking about nf player nfl players want security and multi-year deals right well you i'm not that, knocking right? kirk cousins i'm not knocking him i'm knocking the vikings for being so stupid to be like you already got all this guaranteed money. Let's go do it again. Give you a brand new year, a thirty-five million but guaranteed. Like, my what? point is, it's one year. It's not a multi-year deal, so there is no security in this other than the cash. There is no. We don't know if he is the future of the Vikings. The only thing we know is he's the quarterback for next year. That's it. That's all. He's making thirty-five mil. Raylan, please go ahead, sir. <sighs> my Lakers are down nineteen too. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> rough night, man. It definitely Christian Kirk. I the question was which which Kirk got overpaid, right? Christian yes. Kirk, like Kirk Cousins is a very good quarterback. He's a very good quarterback. He's not elite, he's not great, he's very good. And in and, and this climate, you pay people what the market demands, right? Minnesota's another team who had to look around and think maybe we're an elite quarterback away, right? But then all the elite guys fell off the board extremely fast. Like Brady came back to Tampa Bay, Rogers resigned, Russell Wilson went went to the AFC. It's not another marquee guy out there unless you want to break up your. Watson's you, still available. Yeah, but then you have you have to give up something to get Deshaun Watson, and you still gonna pay a ton of money, right? I'm just if, saying, if, you add those weapons and Deshaun Watson together. Yeah, but trust me, if I'm Houston and you call me, one of them weapons better be in involved in this phone call, right? Like if, if if I'm Houston and Minnesota calls me, right? You we're not getting off this phone call and you keep everybody. You're not keeping Madison, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. You ain't keeping everybody. You don't get to keep the whole crew and not get my guy. Oh no, he worth something. So you keep all those weapons in place. You you have to feel like if Dalvin Cook is healthy the whole season, maybe we're a different team. Maybe we can sure up this defense, we're a different team. Like I don't look at that team and think Kirk Cousins is the reason they lost. You just don't look at them and think Kirk Cousins put them over the top either. So maybe you feel, man, listen, if they can win with Jimmy Garoppolo, we can win with Kirk Cousins, right? If they can win with Ryan Tannehill, we can win games with Kirk Cousins. That's what Minnesota has to be thinking. A guy who's been there, who's familiar with your system, you got the weapon. In fact, the offense hasn't been the problem. Like Minnesota puts up points. If you go back and look at some takes last year, some shows I was on, some I kept saying, when they were two and three, I'm like, man, Minnesota's the best two and three team in the league. All, all the early losses in the season were one score games. They go down and the team kicks a game when the field goal. Wasn't Minnesota in that game where the kickers kept missing field goals? They was in that game, right? But aren't they in games with the Lions late in the game where it's like 19 to 13? Yeah, right. That, that's but what that's okay. Like, John, how do you that's do a that with John, the that's Lions? A division game. John, yeah. stop that. That's a division no, but that's game. Well, they let Cooper, so here's the thing. Rush. Wait, Cooper here's the thing. Rush beat them at home. It oh, was here, the defense. The, thing, though, the defense is the problem. You got to agree. Why, why, you, why you're disrespecting my Lions? Like, like he said, that's a division game. You I'm not disrespecting. Like I'm just saying, if you have all them weapons and the Lions clearly are in rebuild, like you should be putting up points on a team that has not a if lot to play for, if right? It's one thing we did all year: the Lions played hard every game. I promise we did. Like as a guy who watches them, I don't think we're a very good team. 
but we played hard every game. If you look, we were in every game. Early in the year, we were playing against San Francisco. We were down, made a push late, then they won. We played against Baltimore. They had to go fourth and 20 to beat us and then kick a 63-yarder, right? 66. Like, so we played teams very hard all season. We just couldn't win games. So I'm not – I don't look at a team having a tough game against the Lions as like an indictment on they're not a good team. The Lions played people very tough this year. Those are the games you walk into and think it's an easy win. It's the Lions. And you walk away going, man, them boys building something over there. So, again, I, I'm not tripping on Kirk Cousins getting money because quarterbacks get money, right? So, but Christian Kirk, Jesus Christ. Why? Who? What? They bit themselves out the game. You like somebody, I think it was Eric that said it. Like, no, I think it was John that just said, Nobody was offering him that, but they said maybe somebody's interested. So let's just go. Like that was one of the dumbest things. I don't get it. Like they're not. They're going to be very bad next year. He doesn't move the needle at all for that team. He doesn't move the needle at all. Christian Kirk isn't better than the receivers they had over there. Marvin Jones over there, right? Like I, I don't. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I, maybe they say we want to get. And young now guys he's a top ten paid wide offense. receiver. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand that at all. I Does the market that. call? For a wide receiver to get that kind of money, I mean, Coop got Amari Not Cooper Christian got Kirk. five years. Okay, but I can say the same thing about Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper got five years, hundred million. What did he do for you? Don't Not worry, I'll wait. The reason the, the Cowboys came no, back Amari to Cooper, life. No, Amari Cooper produced. No. Produced what? Touchdowns. Catches. Megan, if if I'm right, he saved Dak's career, correct? Ooh, I'm not the one that said that. That's James Tatum. Hey, that they said brought that. him back, and Dak that changed the trajectory of Dak and that team. John, I actually, th on, th I actually think Dak out. is the reason why Amari Cooper isn't there. Because yeah, things changed on. once he came to that team. John, I had the same argument with somebody online the other day where they went. Amari Cooper saved Dak's career. Are we forgetting that as a rookie in this league, Dak Prescott with 13 and three completed 68% of his passes, 23 touchdowns, five interceptions, about 3,700 yards. He did that as a rookie, right? So then people go, but what about that year? He was playing bad. People have down years. Tell me what Amari Cooper was doing the year he got traded. The year he got traded from Oakland, he was over there playing like a bum. So they right, but he came other. to I'm Dallas gonna... and he fit really well when he first came. Now this yeah. last year, like I, I think I think that Amari Cooper's fell off a little bit, and I think a that when bit. he plays no. a little bit, uh, no, I'm saying when he plays, let me finish. He shows like he's disinterested at random times in games. Like he just you forget he's there. Now, I don't know why, but that's one of the things Amari Cooper does. But when he first got there, that was like a jolt of energy into that team. Like that was huge for the Cowboys. C.D. Lamb was a jolt of energy to that team. Ezekiel Elliott was a jolt of energy to that team. Dak Prescott was a jolt of energy to that team. Amari Cooper wasn't a jolt of anything to the Dallas Cowboys. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that about a team that makes me nauseated to my stomach. Okay? Amari Cooper got paid Mike five years, $100 million, And I truly want to see what jolt he did for Dallas. Because Dallas still... Didn't win a playoff game. You won the division. Congratulations. You did, yeah, you're in You're in one of the worst divisions in the NFL, but you still won the division. Congratulations. In Amari 2019 and 2020, he had over 1,000 or over 1,100 yards both those seasons. Now, last season, yeah, there were some problems. I give you that. He only had 865 yards. Um, there was some problems just within our receiver core and what was going on with Dak. And I think there was conflict between Amari and Dak, and Amari had to go. But absolutely, uh, 2019 and 2020, yeah, he produced. So he had over 1,100 yards a year. Dak broke his ankle. That's yeah. pretty good. Yes, he was the only quarterback he was going to. They had C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb was, nah, I, Lamb I was mean, a rookie. He, and I agree with that comment. He may be overpaid, but he wasn't overrated. Coop was not the problem over there. And us paying somebody that just tore his ACL after he played three games last season, that's the problem. All right. Well, we'll save that conversation for another time because I'm done talking about Dallas with <laughs> the sports arena. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, chiming in. Appreciate everybody in the comment section. The Big crew, will be back. <laughs> the crew will be back Wednesday night talking about the MLB lockout, talking about the uh, brackets. Everybody get your brackets together because March Madness does start on Thursday. So for Ray Lynn, Sideline Sports Network, Sports Arena without Sports Arena, side, side, he got a launch. <laughs> My, I'm, you see, this is what happens when you get me talking about Dallas. I just can't stand it. My mind is just, and I start having word vomit. Anyhow, for everybody here tonight on the show, 
Much love. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. We out.